Hello YouTube, it is the Avenger Crusader, and this is episode 42 of Europa Universalis 3 Let's Play as the Hanza. And I recommend that if you have not yet read A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you should probably go do that because it is an excellent book and you will discover the meaning of the number 42. But, on a more practical note, let's review what we did last video. The main thing that we did... Oh, one second. Gotta make sure my microphone is in place. There we go. The main thing we did was we took over Mecca and Aiden. That was actually two videos ago. And we did a lot of colonizing. And Portugal actually had three colonies in the Caribbean, which we booted off with the use of spies. We're going to need to get rid of St. Kitts as well once our economy is a little bit more effective. Because we are losing quite a bit per month, which is not good because our colonial maintenance is so huge. We need to pay off some of these colonies. So let's go ahead and adjust the treasury a little bit so that we're not losing quite so much. We can afford to lose five. Let's do that. And what else do we need to do? Not a whole bunch. I have noticed that Bohemia is huge as ever, and they actually just took over Brandenburg. I don't know who they are at war with besides Brandenburg. I need to find out. Where are you at? Ah, here we go. Norwegian Genoese Excommunication War. So Norway must be excommunicated, I think. One of these, Norway or Genoa, is excommunicated. And Bohemia joined on the side of Genoa. And Brandenburg joined on the side of Norway, so they are now at odds with each other. And as you can see, that did not work out so well for Brandenburg. So I don't know exactly what that all is going to do. Hopefully nothing that will negatively affect us, because if Brandenburg, or not, if, uh, if Bohemia actually takes Potsdam and Ruppen, which they probably won't do, but if they do, they will actually directly border us on Mecklenburg. Which could be an issue if we ever give them cause to go to war with us, which hopefully we won't do, but it could turn out that way, and that would be very, very, very bad. So let's try not to mess with them as much as possible. Uh, yeah. Alright, so without further ado, let's speed up time a little bit and get started. So we can't spend any money, because we need to get our economy out of the tubes. Oh, did not want Mecklenburg to be reformed. I would like Protestant, please. Because we now are slowly gaining missionaries. And it would be really, really cool if we could convert to Protestantism sometime shortly. But I don't see it happening unless we get more than 0.15 a year. So I believe that once we get our next national idea at level 22, which is going to take quite a while, we will take Divine Supremacy, which will give us extra missionaries. Alright, do we want to keep Conrad? Yes, okay, I believe we do. Eight, eight, six. Okay, fine. Let's just keep him as long as possible. If we succeeded in Rio, can we afford to send another? Yes, yes we can. Okay, the reason I have our ships out in the open. How much do we have to change it by? Oh, not that. Oh, now it's gone. That was really weird. Oh good, England's not embargoing us. Speaking of which, we can cancel this mission now, finally. We want to get trade rates, which means we need to get more trade rates. And we give all that awesome bonuses. Specifically, the four year bonus of national trade income plus 30%, which is pretty fucking awesome. Love that. Any trade rights from Levant? Very likely. It is trade rights, yeah. Yes, it is. So what do we want to get from you? Let's take the cloth. No, let's take iron. Can we get, likely, can we get anything from Utrecht? Very likely. Anything from Munster? Impossible. That's 
us. What am I thinking? Nope. And nope. And maybe our trade rights. We invite them to our trade league, but they won't do it. Invite them to the trade league, but it's very unlikely. Nope. Trade rights. No way that Burgundy will agree. Aachen's already doing it. Maybe Wurzburg? Nope. Um, different league. Thuringia wants to join. Maybe we can just get trade rights first. What about you? You are Vassal. Love Vassal. Trade rights? Yes. Very likely. I just got that. Magdeburg said no. Thuringia says yes. Provence says yes. Louis says yes, Utrecht says yes, and I believe that with the ones we already had, it should be enough. We only need five, right? Yep, there we go. Alright, people. Now we need to improve stuff in Belgium. Where is that province? Ah, of course. Actually, that's not such a terrible idea. Let's go ahead and do that. Autosave kicking in. Autosave is always nice. Build a level two fort, and I'm gonna wait until I get a colonist and pay off another colony. Oh, merchant died, and unfortunately, the state I believe needs the money. We don't really need a theologian, artist, or philosopher, so we're just gonna take the cash, which is delightful. Let's pay off. Nope, that's about to flip. That's about to flip. That's not about to flip. And by the way, if I didn't make it clear when I say flip, I mean that it's about to grow naturally to uh, the 1,000 colonist mark. And once it does that, it turns into an actual province that we can build stuff in. So, yeah, that's what I mean when I say flip. It means it's going to grow naturally, and I don't actually need to send another colonist there. And actually, I believe I said in the very first video, way, way back, that I would explain why I set the colonist size at 400 people. And it very well may seem that I am tipping the scales in my own favor by allowing me, by allowing myself to colonize lots and lots of provinces at a time. And I do admit that it is one benefit of having the setting set that way. However, I always set it that way, even when I'm playing as a non-colonizing um, country, such as maybe Rizong. I don't actually play them, I don't think I ever have, but you know, somewhere up in uh, Russia, where I'll be expanding into the hordes, or someplace uh, like Austria, where I'm going to try and expand into Greece and Macedonia and then into Asia Minor, I always set it that way, just because it's more realistic. If you're going to have to send a ship all the way from Europe, you know, hundreds of miles to the Americas or to Africa, you're not just going to send 100 people. You're going to send more than that. So I guess I could do 300 because that's slightly more realistic. But uh, I like 400 just because it kind of makes things happen a little bit faster in the game. And while it means that I can colonize faster, that also means that other uh, territories, other uh, nations can colonize quickly as well. So I uh, hope I cleared that up. Sorry for not saying it sooner. It's been 40 episodes. I probably should have meant that a little bit sooner. But uh, it's done now. So, sorry about that. Oh, Coolio. Tierra del Fuego is getting people. I think we'll send our next colonist there. Oh, we're trading in coffee. Nice. Military engineer, don't care. Should we build anything cool? Probably. Something has production efficiency plus 25%. Yes, please. Build not much else. Although we can build a counting house here as well. So there we go. Rio succeeded. Rio is now a full size territory. We can build a fort there. Good deal. So what else do we need to do? We can build. We can now be an administrative monarchy. Can we switch to that? No. Balls. That 
is actually a very nice government type for this time of game. Hmm. I'm gonna reduce. No, we want to keep naval up. What's our? Yeah, we need to build more ships though. How many did I set in production? One. Click, please. Guadalupe succeeded, but. Should I send another? No, I don't think I will. I'm gonna send one down here. Tierra del Fuego. By the time that arrives, it'll be right about 600, maybe 630, 40. So that will convert as soon as that colonist arrives in 200 days. How many ships am I building in Dutch? Three more. Cool. You guys can join up. Bremen. There we go, and there's our navy of 711. And we need to get these guys going. Because we have some Aztecs to conquer. Are we gonna be able to we should be able to get all the way across. Ooh, we got another colonist. Where should we send them? About right there. There we go. We can build something else. What do we want to build? Ooh. That's nice. No good places to build docks. Don't really need anything else. Uh, don't want manpower buildings. Hmm. I want to build spy agencies because once we get the next level of government tech in six years, it'll actually be quite a while. But once we do, we can get town halls, and those are a 25% boost to tax, which is crazy because you know Lubeck is almost 70 tax. So a 25% boost to that would be like I don't know, like 20, 30 ducats. So that would be huge. So I'm going to go ahead and build that there. Uh, what the actual nope, what the actual uh, spy agencies do is they reduce stability cost and spy defense. They increase spy defense, actually. So spy defense actually isn't too huge. It's a little bit useful if you notice that there's a lot of spies in a particular territory. You can send one, but it's not really a severe thing that you need to mess with. Now, what do we want to do with our sliders? I don't want to go any farther towards centralization at the moment. Because if we do, we get something called policy restriction. Where is it? So look at the revolt risk here. At the very top of that, it says, like we rebels particularist. And then slightly covered by the mouse, it says policy restriction plus two. So we've actually made two moves past what it's allowed to be for centralization versus decentralization. So every time we move one, it increases the revolt risk by one. So right now it's not really a problem, but theoretically it could be quite an issue if you are having problems like war exhaustion, which also increase the um, revolt risk. And especially in newly conquered territory, it's not much fun. So we're going to hold off on that until we change to a type of government that allows us to go farther towards centralization without penalties. But I'm not really sure what else we need to do. I don't want to go any farther towards quality right now. I would love to max it out, but not at the moment, because we only have 26,000 manpower, which is not a ton. So going farther towards quality would lower that by another two and a half percent it would make us much better at fighting but we'd have less people to go with which could be a very very large problem if we run into a mainland battle so i guess what we could do is go towards i don't know really i think we're gonna have to take a step towards narrow-minded just so that we can get more missionaries.
So it's going to mean that our technology is harder to get, but all these other things, all these negatives will go down. So it'll be easier to get stability, we'll get extra missionaries, and papal influence will not go down quite as fast. Oh, great. Oh, this is actually really nice. Religion in Cumana changes to Protestant, which is good because we actually want them to be Protestant. So that is working out quite well. What is it? What does our religion look like right now? Country religion, not the best. I want this to be like halfway. It's not going to get anywhere close to that, but I want it to expand. I want there be more Protestantism. Is that Ford almost done? Yes, it is. Discover Nunavik. I love these missions. Where is Nunavik? We can kind of cheat a little bit. Use the province finder to find it. Ah, okay, it is up here somewhere. Not sure exactly where that is. My Canadian naval geography is not the best, unfortunately. But it looks to be somewhere up here, so we should be able to find it fairly easily. We just have a knick-knack, that's cool. And we are actually at this point ready to go to war with the Aztec. So before we do that, let's be smart. And it is January, so we can afford to raise the maintenance of our land units. And they don't have full morale, but that's okay because the quality is much higher than the Aztecs. It's their land tech is only one. So do they even have forts? They do not. Oh. So this actually raises a question. Do we want to attack Aztec or Cherokee? Does Cherokee have forts? They do. I'm actually going to make the executive decision here to attack the Cherokee instead. Because although it seems a bit silly to attack the people who have forts before the people who do not have forts, the thing is that forts are the only thing that survive after you conquer a territory militarily in a militaristic fashion so by attacking the Cherokee we'll get to keep their forts whereas if we attack the Aztec and take them over they will not have forts and we'll have to build them all ourselves which will obviously take up several magistrates and quite a bit of cash and time and anytime rebels pop up and there are sure to be rebels they will instantly take control of any territory that does not have a fort already or soldiers that are standing on it ready to fight so that would be a whole huge issue and I don't want to really have to you know mess with that with only 11,000 troops so instead we are going to be clever and attack Cherokee because they have forts already and we can call out our vassals but we don't need to so let's not and they don't have any allies because most likely they haven't found anyone and they actually have, there were originally three uh, different tribes that in here, that um, occupied this area, but the Cherokee must have taken them over because I don't see them. It usually happens that way, they take over someone. So where's Nunavik? There it is. We're going right towards it. Tierra del Fuego is good to go. And now the great thing about this mission is you get five colonists for discovering this. So it's actually ridiculously useful, especially since we're going to find it right after we get these colonists. This colonist. So we're actually going to have six to dispose of. Ooh, Cape Verde is now a core. Nice. So how far can we colonize? Ah, we can get to Patagonia Occidental. That's good to know. But we have cash. Let's send a colonist. That one's about to flip. This one is not. Let's send him there. And we can send another one there. Wait, is there already one there? Yeah, there's already one going. So that's going to flip as well. So how many colonies do we have right now? Six. So that one... Nope. That one is about to get uh, colonized. That one's about to get colonized. That one is about to flip on its own. And then we have three islands we can pay off, and then we can send two more colonists wherever we want. I think we'll send them to Valjonas and Tortuga and get that island. We must snap up all the Caribbean because it is good, 
good territory. Come on, discover Nineveh. Right, so should we? I think we should probably attack here. Ooh, maybe not. Uh, we discovered Nunavik. Excellent. Colonize Pamlico is our current goal. Okay. So I quit the siege. They were actually assaulting, and we are about to get owned. So I might want to make a tactical retreat, retreat back to the ships. If I leave, will I make it? No, they'll still catch me. Might as well stay. So hopefully we'll be able to fight them off. Because that would suck to lose 11,000 troops. Just because I was stupid. But yeah, if you are losing a siege, you can just right click on another territory. And then right click on the territory you're sieging. And the fort will stay the same. And your troops will not die any longer in a pointless attack. Alright, so you can come back here. You guys can go fight off those pirates. And where is this? Pemico. Right there. Okay, so we're going to send one here. One to Tortuga. One to Barbados. I think it's Barbados. Yes, it is. That one's about to flip. That one's done. Where was the other one? Here we go. So we actually have another colonist that we can send somewhere. Hmm. Let's do Seminole. No, let's not. Be silly. Let's do Bahamas. Right, so hopefully we're not going to lose these guys because that would be awful. Oh, there's quite a few. Should not have brought took this navy away. Go back. Okay, so the okay, we just barely won that. Managed to kill four thousand men with that little army, so that was pretty cool. Looks like we're not going to die horribly. So let's go ahead and take care of the pirates again. And let's just stand there. Oh, these guys are tricking me out. Come on, beat them up. Good, we picked them out again. Okay, we gained the Azores. That's excellent. Does that do anything for our colonial? No, it does not. Not really. We can still colonize pretty much anywhere in North America that we want to, which is excellent, by the way. And I don't dare to assault again. Oh, this is cool. Is this our ruler? No, it's someone else. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Look at this guy. So we can either get extra tax for a couple months, looks like six, or we can get 60 ducats and get rid of debt for four or five months. Well, Tax plus 10% would only be about 3 ducats for 6 months, would be 18. So let's just take the money. Yeah, mathematics. And they said it wouldn't be useful. Cool, Guantanamo. Oh, that was silly. Shouldn't have sent anyone there. Ah, waste of a colonist. Cherokee wants to vote peace. I'm sorry, my friend, but that is not going to happen. Risk of Rio. Patagonia, Patagonia, there we go, we actually have some cash, so let's try to get rid of these guys, succeeded, that dropped the population by about 200, failed, and can we do another, I think we can, failed again, damn it, well we got two more that we can send next year, Ciara is self-sustaining, that is what I like to hear. Barbados succeeded, even though it already flipped as well, I think, maybe. Mecca has a revolt, we should put that down fairly easily. 
Got to send another one to Tortuga and can we afford Yes. So we got a free colonist for colonizing Pamlico, which is awesome. And we have a goal to colonize Rio. So we will do that shortly. Yep, killed all the rebels in Mecca. We're about to win this siege. And then once we do, I'm just gonna chill here for a little bit and get my manpower back. No, no, I did not want to do this. God damn it. I thought for sure that it said that we weren't gonna lose money. <sighs> Deep breaths. Okay. Well, how bad's the interest? Four and a half percent. Hmm. This may be the first time that I actually take someone to get rid of the interest because we could actually get a fairly good interest removal person. I don't remember what they're called. Uh, we can stop investing in government because it's not very useful. We get awesome gunpowder units, so let's go for that. Three years, we will have gunpowder. Well, technically, we already have it because we have cannons, but we will have individualized muskets for all of our troops, which will be sweet. So do we want to hire a banker? Maybe. Looks like it's 1% per star. So if we could get a level 5 guy, he would completely annihilate all of this interest, I think. No, he wouldn't. Because it's 7%. Because it goes up by 2% interest per loan. So we could get rid of up to 6% if we get a level 6 guy. Banker, banker, banker. Where you at, Banker? Here he is. Got a level 5. So we can get rid of quite a bit of interest. So it was at 4.5. This guy's going to cost half of a ducat per month. So if it goes from 4.5 to 4, he's done. He's at least paid for himself. And let's see. At the end of the year, it should tell us. We're about to win the siege. There we go discovering stuff, and yeah, it's down to 2.6, so we actually took off uh, two ducats per month. And I would still love to just pay that off early, but we can't because of the game mechanics. So I guess we're just going to have to wait. But let's go ahead and try to discover that, because it'll still take another month, which means we can get our troops back. Cautiously improve our land technology and keep on discovering Yamasi. Now, I'm not going to make the same mistake that I did last time, but I would like to split these guys up so that we can siege two at once. Alright, so we get a free magistrate, but we need to use this guy. So let's uh, build lots of spy agencies wherever the tax is highest. Because after spy agencies, we'll be able to build town halls and get another magistrate, and then we get people going to the colonies, which is cool. And let's build something a little bit more useful than that, like a level 1 fort. Well, we actually have quite a few to build. And we have our very, very first missionary. So let's send him off to Mecca. Because why not make it Christian? And you know what, guys? That is pretty much all the time that we have today. This episode, we got the challenge to discover Nunavik, and that gave us five colonists. So we expanded our colonies significantly. And we tried to get rid of these guys in Portugal, colonized island. St. Kitts, and they are resisting all of our attempts to get rid of them, and we finally got rid of another 200 of them, but they're still not gone, and we have another colonist who should go to Rio, that's not Rio, that is Rio, alright, and that's pretty much the episode, so guys, thank you for watching, if you enjoyed what I did, please leave a comment saying what you enjoyed. If you didn't, leave a comment saying what you didn't enjoy. I try and hope to fix it later. 
and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.